Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well. My name is Shalina and I post all content fashion. So if fashion is your thing, please do consider subscribing. I would love to have you here. In today's video, I want to share with you um, tips I have for when you are going on a flight. I did lots of traveling when I worked in buying. I visited places like China, Taiwan, Turkey, India, Sri Lanka, quite a few. And then I visited places personally quite a lot. So I have basically collated all the tips I have and I want to share them with you in this video. First thing is dark colours. I personally prefer to stick to wearing dark colours on a flight. That is not to say I don't wear a white t-shirt because I'm quite partial to a white t-shirt. However, if you are particularly clumsy or you are traveling with children, I would probably avoid those lighter colors. If you spill, so get something spilled on yourself, you're gonna have to sit with that stain on your clothing for the whole flight. Um, and don't know about you, but it probably make me feel a little bit uncomfortable. So definitely avoid those lighter colors if you can. And then the next thing is trousers. Now I probably would stick to trousers on a flight. I just think they're the most comfortable thing to wear. It's obviously very cold up there and it keeps you warm. I would definitely stick to tracksuit bottoms, leggings, activewear leggings with not a lot of compression because if it has got a lot of compression it's going to make you feel uncomfortable and if you really must wear jeans then I would stick to a baggier style that you can feel free to move around in but then make sure it's got a cuff at the bottom so it's just held in. The reason I say that and let me just tell you the ones I would avoid and why it all makes sense. I would avoid wide leg trousers, anything flowy is just probably a no-no and that includes flowy long skirts and the reason I say that is because when you go to the toilet these things are inevitably going to have to hit the ground. I get you could probably hold them up if you wanted to but if you experience turbulence while you're in the toilet which isn't the best thing then these are probably going to hit the ground and you can imagine so many people using the same toilet on a long haul flight that is not probably getting cleaned between you know each person using it so it's probably going to be very very dirty. This is why I prefer to stick to bottoms that are going to hold up as much as they can by themselves. So if you really, really, really must wear jeans, then definitely stick to a baggy leg, like I said, but one that has maybe a cuff at the bottom. Make sure the cuff isn't too tight. You don't want to feel that pressing on you the whole flight. And maybe try ones that have a paper bag waistband. They tend to be that bit more comfortable. The reason I avoid jeans is just because I tend to get bloated after I eat. And yes, I do have to undo that button. And I don't wanna sit in a plane and have my jeans but none done. Also I just find them quite restrictive especially if you're going on an overnight flight they're going to be not the most comfortable to try and get some sleep in so for me it's definitely my top one is definitely probably um tracksuit bottoms and while we're on the subject of avoiding things like wide leg trousers i would also probably avoid um like i said flowy skirts play suits and jumpsuits they are going to be such a pain to go to the toilet in it's it's going to be a real task every time you're going to the loo also think about the fabrics you're wearing, maybe stick to breathable fabrics like cotton, linens or bamboos, anything like that. And remember that layering is key. You're gonna be maybe running through the airport one minute and then be up in the other next and be quite cold. So it's always good to have a few layers on so that you can take off and put on as you need it. And then shoes. So I personally wear trainers when I am going on a flight. My feet, I mean, I'm just a generally quite a cold person. <laughs> I mean, body temperature wise, not, not personality wise. But I do definitely like to have my socks and shoes covering my feet. I don't tend to travel in sandals unless it's a really quick flight. Avoid trainers that are really hard to get on and off. Think about when you're going through security. Now that is a pain, especially if you're doing it with other people that may need your assistance, like children or elderly relatives or something like that. You just wanna be able to get your shoes on and off really quickly. I have a few pairs of trainers that I can slip my feet out of and then put my feet back into without having to undo anything. I avoid trainers like Converse, even though I love them, that they are just a pain to get on and off. So I stay away from them. If you like certain just slip on shoes, then wear those. If you are gonna wear shoes without socks, then I would carry a spare pair of socks for the plane because no doubt your feet will be getting cold. I would personally also avoid heels. I mean, I don't really wear heels anymore, but if you are a heels person, just in case you find yourself being late or you've got quite a long way to walk in some of the bigger airports to the gate that you need, um, heels are definitely just gonna tire you out, maybe even stress you out at some points. So I personally avoid heels. I think also on the 
rare, rare chance that there, anything happens in an emergency on a plane. I think they do tell you to take heels off anyway, but it's probably something you wouldn't want to have on your feet in an emergency. Also, if you do end up wearing shoes that might be slightly hard to get on and off or have laces or whatever that might be, maybe take um, a spare pair of like hotel style slippers, the really thin ones that you can just put on really easily. So if you want to get up and go to the toilet, you don't have to keep putting your shoes on and off. Also, if you want a bit more space underneath the seat in front of you, because we usually have loads of stuff there and it can feel quite uncomfortable at times if you've got nowhere to stretch your legs, Legs, then you can just put your shoes in the overhead locker if there's space and just keep the slippers to the side or tucked into the little neck or you can just keep the slippers um, tucked underneath the seat in front of you. Okay so bags to consider. I personally like to go for a backpack. I know this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea but I just like to be hands-free when I'm at the airport. It just helps me to feel a little less stressed. I also like to carry my Uniqlo bag, um, the shoulder bag. I keep all my important things in that bag and then have the things that I'm not going to be reaching for as much or just the things that I'm going to need on the plane in my backpack. So in my Uniqlo bag will usually be my passport and my phone where I'll have my boarding pass. I tend to get all my documents on my phone but I do also print out a backup copy just in case like my phone dies for any reason or it simply just doesn't work. So I do like to have a backup copy. If you are carrying a tote bag maybe think about a bag organizer so it's just easy to find things and then think about security Security. you don't want people to be able to put their hands in your bag quite easily so maybe opt for one with a zip or um, a snap closure or something like that also you don't want things to be falling out all over the place so think about something that can keep all your bits in your bag so here are a couple of things that you probably want to avoid belts is one of them they undoubtedly will set off the security systems or you'll have to take them off pop them back on again again it just adds to that all these little things can add to the stress of travel so if you can avoid a belt altogether i would definitely try to do that another thing is jewelry again you will have to take quite a lot of your jewelry off potentially and again if you're going on a night flight you probably don't want all that jewelry on you anyway maybe just carry it in a small bag and keep it in your your belongings that you're carrying with you. I personally would avoid putting any expensive jewellery in your checked luggage um, just in case that goes missing. I would definitely carry it in a bag that I'm taking on the plane with me so I know that it's with me and that it's safe. Okay so just a couple bits that I would put in my carry-on bag. So the first thing and the thing I definitely always have to take is toothpaste and a toothbrush. I definitely will need to brush my teeth before I try and sleep. I mean sleep who sleeps on an aeroplane. Especially if you're going on an overnight flight you don't want to like wake up and just have breakfast. I don't know, I guess some people can do that. I just personally can't without brushing my teeth first. So for me, that is a must have. Another thing I would suggest is taking a change of clothes. As I talked about before, you know, if you're clumsy or if someone dropped something on you, which did actually happen to me, someone took something out of the overhead locker, it fell, knocked my drink, that went all over me. I didn't have anything spare to change into. So definitely take a spare outfit. This will also cover you if your checked in bag goes missing, at least you'll have something to change into if you need to. Definitely include underwear. I would even be tempted to say carry a few changes of underwear just in case. Also remember don't wear anything that puts pressure on your stomach. I would stay away from anything like I said that has any compression in it or any um, sort of shaping in it. And then consider wearing a sports bra instead of a regular bra especially one that has underwire. If you're going to try and sleep on a plane, I think this could be quite uncomfortable. Opt for a bralette if you don't want to personally wear a sports bra. I like the ones that don't have any wires in them and they just have a really light support. That is one that I would feel comfortable wearing on the plane. But if you're not comfortable wearing anything that has any form of support, then opt for a bralette with a bit of padding so that you're all covered. This probably applies more to long haul flights, but where I talked about carrying a change of underwear, this is something you might wanna do in the morning of your flight. So you could carry feminine wipes and then just give yourself a little clean and feel a bit fresher. Equally, wear a panty liner and you can take that off in the morning and then feel like you're wearing fresher knickers or you can just change your knickers if you want to, if you're able to in the tiny plain toilets that's always a good way to feel refreshed in the morning. Also remember you don't need to do this in the plane. You can carry these things with you so that you can do it when you land in the airport toilets before you collect your luggage. Um, just pop into the ladies, 
sort yourself out. Just don't forget to bring a small bag to put your dirty knickers into. So when it comes to makeup, I personally on a long flight will avoid wearing it. Yes, I would like to wear some through the airport. If I do, then I carry on a travel pack size of makeup wipes so that when I get on the plane, I can get myself situated, take all my makeup off and feel a little bit more comfortable. So I've got a flight coming up soon, which is a night flight, and I probably won't bother with the makeup. I feel like I'm just gonna put it on to take it off. So I probably will just do without. You can also do things like a sheet mask on the flight. Up in the air, there's so much aircon being pumped into the aeroplane and recycled air and all that kind of thing that your face um, can get quite dry, well, your skin in general can get really dry. So I am going to be definitely carrying a sheet mask to do at some point. My skin does get really dry on flights, she says, scratching her arm. And I also carry like a body cream because I like to put that on my arms when I'm traveling as well. Um, and my hands also get very dry after washing quite a lot. So definitely carry something that is going to add a lot of moisture back in. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated as well. And then when it comes to perfume, again, I am quite sensitive to strong smells. Yes, I do wear perfume, but when I'm gonna be in somewhere that is like a confined space, I prefer not to wear it. I also think this could bother other passengers, especially people like me who are sensitive to smells. I mean, I don't think it would bug me that much if someone else was wearing perfume, but if it's particularly strong, then maybe so. So maybe go a little bit easy on the perfume if you really have to wear it. And then also consider sunscreen. You are gonna be high up in the air there's going to be quite a lot of sun coming through the windows at points maybe just have your sunscreen on ready or have it with you so that when you get to your i'm guessing sunny destination i know some people like to go to cold places I guess because I live in England, I don't want to go to a cold place, then definitely have your sunscreen ready so that you are all protected. Also a tip, I mean, I don't wear glasses, but a lot of people in my family do. So if you are wearing contact lenses, they often tell me that it is better to take the contact lenses out and pop your glasses on. It can get, again, very dry up in the air. So I think contact lenses irritate their eyes. I don't know if that's correct because I don't wear them myself, but maybe you want to opt for your glasses instead. Don't forget, you can always carry all of these things so that you can pop them on when you get to your destination so if you want to put perfume on when you get there carry a small travel sized one carry your contacts carry your sunscreen don't forget your sunglasses for when you get to your destination if you're really sensitive to light like I am like sometimes even on a cloudy day but it's still quite bright I have to put my sunglasses on and I know people are thinking I'm trying to be cool but I'm definitely not I just literally am very sensitive to the light so yeah don't forget to have those things handy and carry anything else you might want to put on like your sandals if you're wearing trainers but you want to change into sandals the minute you land then by all means put them in your carry-on luggage and you can change when you get to the airport on the other side okay so those are all my kind of fashion and beauty tips let's jump into some more general tips that might help you when you are traveling an absolute essential for me when I'm traveling is my eye mask. I wear this every day when I go to sleep at home anyway, and I feel like just to zone out a bit when you're on the plane, an eye mask can be great. Also, if you really want to um, cancel out that noise in the background, then maybe consider um, noise canceling headphones. I can't say I've tried any of these myself, so I can't speak for any. So do your research on which ones would be best to get. The other thing I am definitely going to be carrying and did so on my earlier trip this year is anti-back wipes and hand sanitizer. So I've seen a lot of videos by flight attendants who say that the tray tables are probably dirtier than the toilets because they don't get wiped down during the changeovers between flights. And I'm a real germaphobe sometimes, so I definitely will be, as soon as I get on that plane, wiping down absolutely everything. So you can use the antibacterial wipes to wipe down the tray table. I personally would wipe down the seat as well. If you're not a big germaphobe, this probably isn't gonna even bother you. And then the armrest, just anywhere someone would touch don't forget about the the window cover thing you know what i mean that thing don't forget to wipe that hand sanitizer is also great just you know when you're feeling like you just want that extra bit of cleanliness or maybe you've been to the toilet and something's wrong with the tap it's always good to just have it there as a backup for me hand sanitizer is a must also if you are like a real real germaphobe then consider toilet seat covers i think you can get some biodegradable ones i will link some but i'll have a look and i'll link some below if you can you can also pop them on the seat if you want to okay so another thing you might want to consider this is probably more so for people who 
have issues with blood circulation, wear compression socks. It will just help your blood to circulate better when you're up at, at an altitude. Also, don't forget to get up, especially on a long haul flight, get up and walk around the plane a few times. Do this as often as you can, I would say. Not only can you stretch your legs, but it will just keep your blood flow going around right. Don't be concerned with people looking at you or whatever just do what you need to do for you and a little tip on saving money if you want to buying things at the airport can be quite expensive so i personally carry my water bottle but i carry it empty and then when i get airside there are fountains in most places where you can fill up your bottle for free you take advantage of that i think when you go to like wh smith here in the uk on airside the water is just a ridiculous price so best to take your own water bottle and also when you're in flight if that runs out you can just ask the attendant to fill it up for you and then you don't have to keep getting up and asking for water or putting on your call light you've just got a bottle there it's super handy and then when you're on holiday you can use the bottle when you're out and about as well i would also carry some paracetamol with me i tend to do this on flights just in case at any point you get a headache or you're just not feeling great i think think attendants flight attendants usually have these but just for ease you don't need to bother anyone you can just take it as you need it I would definitely carry some can also come in handy when you're at your destination on your holiday saves you having to sort of run around looking for a pharmacy to go and buy some paracetamol the other thing I would avoid on flights is anything too fizzy I think this applies if you get quite bloated quite easily avoid the fizzy drinks avoid the salt a lot of airlines now you can choose a special meal low sodium is one of those and then don't forget to request a meal if you have any specific food preferences most airlines cover vegan vegetarian halal all sorts of things so make sure you check those and don't forget those ones usually come out first as well so if you're desperate for your food then maybe opt for one of those so another thing you will want to consider is your comfort on the flight. So when I was flying for work, I would fly business class, which was quite an experience. The best airline I flew was definitely Etihad. They had those little cubicles where you can like shut the door, which was pretty amazing. Can't say I would spend my own money on it, only because I'd rather use that money on an actual holiday, but each their own. If I had the money, I probably would. But yeah, it was definitely an experience and um, I was definitely able to sleep apart from one flight where I was in business class on Virgin, I think it was. And the guy next to me snored the whole way there. I would be so angry if I had paid for that myself and then couldn't get any sleep because the guy next to me was snoring. So that was, a lot of fun and games but if you are in economy like us non bougie people I would definitely carry an extra blanket I know a lot of airlines give you a blanket but those blankets are so thin they're not big enough so if you've got your uh, shoulders covered then your feet won't be covered and if you've got your feet covered you can't cover your shoulders I like to be all like in a cocoon and nice and cozy I also carry a pillow as well now I know people are probably going to think this is overboard but I just find it so much more comfortable you could vac pack it I haven't tried it but I'm thinking for my upcoming holiday I am going to try this I'm going to backpack my um, fleece blanket which isn't very thick so it should be able to backpack quite small and also my pillow and then put that into a carry-on yes I am gonna have to carry it out on the way out but I don't mind that I think for the comfort factor you'll get on the flight it's definitely worth it and remember on a flight pouches are your best friend organize things into separate pouches that way you won't be digging through your main bag trying to find your hand sanitizer or your headphones just have everything in a pouch and know what's in them then you can separate it out by all your beauty products your changes of clothes any snacks i mean snacks are a must so do it that way and then it will be really easy to find your things and put them back and seeing as i just touched on snacks we might as well go that way but don't forget to pack snacks because yeah you're gonna want them on the plane i just wanted to touch on people who don't particularly love flying i'm definitely one of those people it's not enough to put me off going on holiday or taking a flight somewhere but it's something that is kind of in the back of my mind before a flight my issue is mainly that i feel claustrophobic i hate being in small spaces and being hemmed in i think i particularly feel it when i am sitting in the middle of people i you know i don't know i'm not traveling with so I always try and avoid that but if you do find yourself getting a little bit panicky on a flight just try some deep breathing methods you can do the 478 method which is where you breathe in deeply for four seconds 
hold the breath for seven seconds and then breathe out for eight quite vigorously through your mouth. I find that that always helps me to calm myself. I think the, the worst thing you wanna do is panic in that situation, so definitely concentrate on your breathing. Another thing is always to select your seat beforehand. I know some airlines do charge for that, but a lot of them don't. They let you um, select a seat. I know it's not always promised, but it, you can always make it known that you prefer to sit in an aisle seat. If you're someone like me that always needs to go to the toilet because I have a weak bladder, then do try and stick to that aisle seat. If you're not bothered by noise and people next to you, then choose a seat at the back of the plane near the toilets. On the bigger planes, obviously there's toilets every so often. So do choose a seat near the toilet. If you're particularly scared by turbulence, then definitely choose a seat in the middle of the plane. I think that will reduce the feeling slightly. I don't mind a bit of turbulence personally, but it will definitely help you to feel a little bit more comfortable if you're in the middle. Okay, and then let's talk about things that you can do before you board your flight that can reduce your stress levels when you're traveling. So the first thing I would suggest is using luggage tags. Do get those ones where your information is covered though. This can obviously be used to track down whose luggage it is. So if yours goes missing, they'll know that, that it's yours and be able to contact you. Also, it can serve as a way of identifying your luggage. So if you've got suitcases that are gray or black, just like everyone else has, then it's a an easy way to identify your luggage. Also consider using air tags. Obviously Apple have their air tags, but there are there are tags for Androids and there are also non-branded ones, which I think work just as well. I haven't personally tried any yet. Um, I will be getting some for my upcoming holiday, but I have started looking into it and I've seen some on Amazon. I'll link them down below. They have got quite good reviews and people are saying it works just the same as an air tag, but it's a lot less expensive. So if you're not bothered by brands and things like that, then definitely have a look into that one. Just be sure to maybe check with the airline because I know a lot of airlines are now saying that we shouldn't be using them in our luggage. Something to do with interference and the Bluetooth signal or something like that. Do just double check on their websites to make sure they allow them. If you also want to make your suitcase easily identifiable, consider things like tying ribbon around the handle. That's a nice, easy, cheap way to do it. Or you can get luggage straps that you can put around your suitcase to also make it easy to find. And then things to do before you even get to the airport, you can check in online. Most airlines do this 24 hours before the flight departs. I then download all my flight documents onto my phone so you can download your boarding pass onto your phone. I do also print it just to have a backup copy just in case I need it. And then don't forget that you can pack your liquids, the ones that you are gonna take onto the plane, into a Ziploc bag. Just pop them into a Ziploc bag that you've got at home um, most airports won't make you change it into the bags they've got. Just make sure it's not a giant Ziploc bag, <laughs> otherwise they probably will make you take it out and make sure you can fit it into one of those. So just be realistic with how much you can actually carry on. Make sure all the bottles are 100 mil or less. This will then save you time when you head to the departure gate and you have to get all your bits and pieces out. All you need to do is go into your bag, get your Ziploc bag out and you're ready to go. And then in terms of luggage, I would say if you can, be packed a a few days or even a week before you go, especially if you're going on some away somewhere where you're going to be away for quite a while, or if you're packing for other members of your family, definitely try and have it done, you know, a few days in advance. That way, if you realize that you're missing anything, you've got time to pop to the shops and go and get what you need. Okay, and this one may sound really obvious, but check the weather for your final destination. I think it's really easy to assume that if we are going on a summer holiday and we are going somewhere where it's typically hot, that it will actually be hot and it will be nice and sunny and there'll be no rain, etc. So make sure you're keeping an eye on the weather at your destination and pack appropriately. So if there's a chance of rain, maybe consider taking a light raincoat or an umbrella with you. I made a massive mistake when I went went to Peru on holiday. Um, it was a bit of more of a sort of active holiday, I guess, but you know, I didn't think about the fact that I was gonna be in Lima, in Puno, in Cuzco, and then heading to the Amazon rainforest. I also did Machu Picchu, and it was really different temperatures in all of these places. And I think I just thought in my head, oh, I'm going to South America. It's gonna be hot, and packed things for that. And it was actually quite cold in some of the places we were. So I ended up having to scramble around looking for somewhere to buy jumpers. Always carry a light jacket if you can. I, I, I think even if you're going to a hot destination sometimes, if you have the space, 
definitely carry something light. You can go for those really light coats that you can get from Uniqlo. I just think it's always great to have a little bit of a backup extra layer of warmth just for that eventuality that you will get cold. Another time saver and stress saver, carry a pen because if you have to fill out a landing card, which you do for a lot of destinations, then you can fill this out on the plane rather than waiting till you get to your destination and then having to do it when you're there. Also, don't forget to have the address of where you're staying handy as this will have to go on the landing card as well. And finally, just talking about electronics. We can't be it without our electronics. I mean, in this day and age. So a couple of things I wanted to touch on were portable chargers, just in case your phone runs out of battery or your tablet runs out of battery, your iPad, whatever it might be. And then a lot of our headphones are, you know, know rechargeable headphones so it's always quite handy to have a portable charger especially if you're going on a long-haul flight I also like to download a lot of the things that I might want to watch on the plane so I'll do that a few days before I am due to go on my flight just to make sure I have some extra things to watch if nothing takes my fancy on the aeroplane entertainment system and then also don't forget to take some spare headphones just in case your wireless ones can't be recharged for any reason at least you've got a spare one there and maybe apple always have those bloody annoying you know plugs that are just ha have to be different to everyone else but maybe consider taking ones that will go into the airplane headphone jack because then you can still use your own headphones but you can actually plug them in to use them. When packing, consider using packing cubes. I only started using these quite recently, but they definitely help to keep things organized. So when I was talking about the pouches in your backpack, these are just like those, but for your suitcase. So you can pack by clothing style, for example, all trousers in one, all tops in another, or you can put outfits together. Some people like to get a whole outfit for a day, including underwear, whatever else they might need for that day, and put it in one bag. I think that's definitely a great way of doing it. So when you're on holiday, you really don't have to think about, you know, what you want to wear that day. It's just all together, grab the bag, go, and have your shower and get ready. I think this can be a great way to do kids outfits as well and um, just wrap them all together and then you can just hand it off to them if they're able to get themselves ready. Again it's just another thing that you don't need to think about while you're away on holiday but also if you are not planning to do any washing on your holiday then make sure you do bring a, a spare bag for all your dirty laundry. That way when you get home you can literally just take that bag out of your suitcase and shove it in the washing machine. Maybe even bring two, one for darks, one for lights so it's all just sorted for you and when you get home you can just have that tackled and done. Do consider going for a sort of capsule style wardrobe if you're going on holiday. I feel like sometimes the amount of decisions we have to make in the day can sometimes just leave us feeling really stressed and flustered. So maybe even do a bit of a try on, on with the things you want to take and see what you can mix and match so that you can make quite a few outfits out of what you've got. Also remember not to pack anything too valuable in your checked in luggage. Make sure you are carrying that on the plane with you. So this can include expensive jewelry, any camera equipment, um, any electrical equipment. Just make sure you've got that with you so you don't need to be so worried about it when you're flying. Don't forget as well that these bags get chucked around quite a lot. So you definitely wanna make sure that you've got your valuables with you. And if it's something that you can't put in your carry-on, then consider getting fragile stickers and putting them on your suitcases I don't know how much this helps but it's worth a shot and if you've also had experiences of your shampoo bottle exploding in your suitcase then consider getting some of these rubber tops that go over your bottles this will help keep all the liquid in so you don't have any spillages okay guys I think that is all that I have written down as my tips for when you're traveling but annoying because I know afterwards I'm going to think of more things that I wanted to share with you these are some of my main tips if you have got a holiday coming up soon I hope you really enjoy it and I hope you enjoyed this video and got a few tips out of it if you did please do consider subscribing and I hope to see you in my next video bye